In this demonstration, you're going to learn how to configure the time slider in ArcGIS Pro. In a past demonstration, uh, we looked at how you time enable a map uh, by going into one or more layers and uh, time enabling those layers. And when you do that, um, you're basically um, ensuring that you get a time slider that shows up at the top of your map. In this case, we've been working with that wildfire points layer. And what we did in the last uh, demonstration was to go into properties, time, and what we did was set a, the uh, time field uh, to fire discovery date and time, only using a single field here to determine or to define uh, our, our temporal information. So that's what we did in the last demonstration. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to watch that, you may want to go back and watch that uh, full demonstration before moving on to this demonstration. In this demonstration, we're going to focus on how you configure uh, this time slider. Right? There are different things you can do to configure this time slider. Uh, and those are all done through the time tab. Uh, the time tab becomes enabled anytime you time uh, enable uh, a map. And so we should see a map context menu with the time tab. When that's activated, your ribbon should look like this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the right-hand side. And you have several options, and we're starting under full extent. So the full extent refers to the, the full extent of your time slider which right now is, is set from 1-1 of 2018 to 1-1 of 2019 uh, for a one-year time extent. You do have several options here. Uh, you can define this as all time-enabled data. Uh, and what that would do was uh, would simply define uh, any time-enabled data that you have in the map. Right? In this case, I only have one layer, but it is possible to have more than one layer that's been time-enabled. So if you had that situation, you could select all time-enabled data or you can select all visible time enabled data, uh, which is similar, but operating only on whatever the visible layers are, which in this case, again, doesn't really matter because I just have the one layer. Uh, you will also get the individual layers as well. So for example, if I selected wildfire points, you'll notice that it automatically selected the, uh, the range of time. So at my start time is 1-1 of 2003 to 1-7 of 2022. That is the range of time uh, data that I have for the particular column that I have time enabled, which in this case is fire discovery date and time. Now, what we'll do in this particular example is we'll, we'll select user defined, right? Because what I want to do is I want to kind of narrow this down. So maybe I'm wanting to focus on uh, a particular time period, right? And so in this case, maybe I'm looking to focus on a time period of, you know, 1-1 of 2018 to 1-1 of 2019, right? Now, as soon as I do that, that will update my time slider to see, to, to display only that particular time extent that I've enabled. And I don't know if I kind of showed you that before, but if you have something else selected, for example, if I had, had gone with wildfire points, that's 2003 to 2022. And you can see how that, uh, that is reflected in my time slider. But in this particular example, I'm going with user defined. And again, we did 1-1 of 2018 to one one of 2019 that automatically updates my time slider to reflect that date. Uh, uh, I didn't tab over, right? So you have to tab over uh, out of that tab. But now I have 2018 to 2019, uh, which reflects what I have set in my full extent um, controls here at the top. Now, other things I may want to do, right? I may also want to uh, specify a current date and time, and I'm going to do that. And right now I'm going to set that to what I've defined in my full extent uh, button. And so I'll copy those dates and times over. So that defines my current time, right? So your current time is whatever shows up here uh, as the current time. Now, when you look on the time slider, uh, you see this dark blue um, horizontal line that indicates the current visible time, right? And right now it stretches all the way from 2018 to 2019. So what is being displayed there uh, would be wildfires that occurred during that particular uh, time frame. Now I'm going to further constrain this uh, to one month at a time by setting the time span. And now what I've done is I further constrain my time. My, my time extent is still the same, right? So I'm still going from 2018 to 2019. Um, but now I'm constraining my data, right, by month, right? So and right now I'm setting it to one month. All right. <clears throat> so it automatically defaulted out to uh, December 2018, uh, right to the end of December 2019. So now you can see that 
uh, on my uh, time slider, the visible time period has been updated so that it only reflects that last month of the year in 2018. My map has also been updated as well. So the, the only point locations that are being displayed are those wildfires that occur between 12-1 of 2018 and 1-1 of 2019. Now I can reset this as well. I can pick this up and move it. All right, so I'll drag it back to the start of the year, still displaying one month at a time, obviously, because I've set that as my span. And so my visible time span, which is reflected by the dark blue line here, as well as my map, uh, of course, has been updated as well, uh, has been updated to reflect uh, that time period. Now, the other thing you may want to do is this time span gets a little bit busy. Uh, the, the dates and times, you know, because my attribute column contains both the date and the time, we looked at that in the last demonstration, this looks a little bit busy, right? And so what you can do is you can come up here to snapping, select time snapping, and then in this case, it's just months. But now you'll notice that what it's done in the time slider is uh, not quite so busy, right? Now it's just displaying January 2018 to February of 2018. All right, <clears throat> so, um, you know, lots you can do here. There's also um, under, uh, there's this enable time button. Uh, if you click that, it turns time off and on, so that's basically a toggle button. If it has a gray background, it's toggled off. Blue background turns it back on. That's the same thing as selecting uh, the time enabled button on the time span itself. All right, so those two buttons do the same thing. Uh, under current time, of course, you have other options here as well. You can, uh, you can disable the start time, you can disable the end time, which uh, you know, gives you a further range of data if you disable those. So for example, if I disable that, or if I disable my end time, now what I've done is I've specified a start time of 1-1-2018, but because I didn't specify an end time, it automatically uh, goes out until the year 2022 or the very end uh, time period of, of, my, of my data. Even though my time span slider is not reflected to update that, um, because I've disabled that here, uh, now what I'm visualizing on the map is everything from 1-1-2018 uh, to 2022. So I'll re-enable that. All right, and then it, uh, then it sets those time constraints back on the, the data set as well. Um, now, there are th other things you can do here. You can set your step as well. Right? This one's pretty straightforward. We just set a step interval of one month in this case because our span is one month. So it really didn't have to touch anything here. But you can change the step uh, in different ways. Right? So I could break it up into a specific number of steps. Right? So the default here would be 30. Right? And so... You know, there are other ways you can define a step interval, but for this particular time data that I'm working with, um, you know, it makes more, more sense because I'm dealing with one year of data. Kind of makes sense to break it up into months and be able to do my interval based on the months. We've talked about snapping. Uh, the playback options reflect uh, what goes on with this time slider. Uh, there are multiple buttons here, including uh, play all steps, which uh, automates the playing of the button or the uh, time slider. You can incrementally step forward or step back. You can speed up or slow down the time slider as you're, and that, that, ref, that is, uh, is reflective of, of you having clicked on the play all steps button. Uh, you can change the direction if you need to. You can have it auto repeat and you can also do uh, a reversed. And so what that does is after the playback gets to the end of the slider, then playback continues in the opposite direction. So it goes left to right and then right to left. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the time slider control itself along with uh, the buttons on the playback section uh, in the next demonstration that I do. So I'll, I'll save the uh, more detailed discussion of what all these buttons do uh, for that particular demonstration. For now, that's really all I needed to cover. Um, so I uh, appreciate you joining me. And then again, in the next demonstration that I do, we'll cover the time slider itself, the different controls that you see on here. Uh, and how to uh, operate the time slider. So until next time, I appreciate you joining me.